Hello, welcome back to Crafty Magic Arts. Today we're going to be making something a little unique like I do most days, but this time it's going to be my first two-parter. You'll see why in a second. But first, let's travel back in time. Back when I was young, naive, and digging through plastic bags from Valley Village, and I find a donkey. Beautiful, simple donkey. Looks cute. And then I find myself a T-Rex. Also cute. Although a little rough around the edges, has potential. What am I gonna do with these? Well, let's bring them back and today we're going to combine them. Combine them. Combine them, bind them, bind them, bind them. Come on. Uh, I guess we gotta do this the old fashioned way. <sighs> All right, let's get the tools out. First, we need to do some measuring. I'm using my tool here, which I totally forgot the name of, and measuring it. Now, I don't actually show you the measurements, but believe me, they're very similar in width. And now, right on the dotted line, I take my trusty knife and slice them in half. Now, if you haven't put two and two together, you can see that I have two combinations here. Hence, part two. But we're only gonna focus on one today. Cleaning up all the edges, you can see that I am ready to combine the two different sides of my magical creation. I will say I hummed and hawed over this more than the other half. I seem to have a clear vision for the other half, but once I saw what I need to make with this one, it was clear as day. First, I had to even up those edges so it seemed a little bit cleaner. I play around the option with adding the back onto the belly. I don't end up doing that, but it's ready to go. Here you can see I've picked out a lot of pieces and I need to do additional cleanup. Lots of cleanup in between this project. So I've actually skipped me putting these pieces together because honestly, it wasn't a lot of fun to watch, but now you can see that I'm kind of planning things out. I have an idea. And what I need to do is I need to remove the tail and then I need to remove the legs. The legs are now fully chopped off and now I have what I need. I do need to clean up the edges. Actually, there's a lot of cleaning that ends up happening, lots of carving, but I finally have it ready. And now I'm gonna show you my idea. I'm gonna make this into a mer t rex a mer rex a mer t rex It works, I'm so excited. But in order for this to happen, I do need wire. I do have this old armature wire that I had from eons ago, and I use this, because it is gonna be the strongest thing that I have. Poor donkey has to get that figured out. And then I am able to put it in. I do add wire to the tail just so I have something to like hold onto it. So if I put anything on the wire, it's just gonna slip right off, including into the tail, which now I am submerging the wire deep in there. Lucky T-Rex donkey, mermaid thing. So now moving to adding aluminum foil. You actually saw me crunch the foil, that is intentional. It actually adheres better when you do that. So if you wanna put layers of aluminum foil on something, I do recommend scrunching it first. Also adding on tape is always helpful. But in order for me to move forward, I do wanna add the tail. So I am now getting that ready by using some cardboard that I had on hand. I cut out the side that I like best, and then I use that as the template for both sides. Tracing that onto the cardboard, I wanna make sure I have that ready to go. I'm checking in with my model to make sure it looks good, and then I cut it out. Um, I do use scissors, I use an X-Acto knife, I use many things, but now here's a tricky thing. I wanna use the legs. I kinda of showed that in my original plan. It's something that just made sense to me. I didn't wanna waste them, so I'm heating them up here using my heat gun, and then I'm taking things that are heavy and smooshing them. So they're quite flat when they get to this point. It takes a good long while. So now they're ready to be added to the donkey, T-Rex thing. But I need to add the tail onto something. I, in order for me to work on this thing, I needed to be on a base. Now this base works really well. I've used this thing before. It's actually from an old tower wreck. So yay, no waste. I keep those things. So now I am quickly gluing in the tail. I'm adding a ton of hot glue and really making sure it's stuck there. And then I actually add on the tail as well off to the side. So here I am planning out how I want the legs. And even though I kind of planned for them to be in a different direction, I like them more in the center because it makes the most sense. And I glue them down onto the tail. Waste not, whatnot. 
feeling pretty good about the placement of the tail, I really lock it in on the underside as well. This is just working out the way I want and the T-Rex is mermaid thing is finally stable. We're just gonna call her Gertrude. Meet Gertrude or Trudy if you want. Now moving on to some DOS clay. Normally I use epoxy sculpt, but I want to try DOS clay and it did actually really work. I hate the texture it leaves on my fingers. It like really dries them out, but it does work for these kind of projects and I do recommend it. It does dry pretty quickly and quite nicely. So if you're needing something like this, it's an option. Looks pretty good. Not quite done. I do want to add more definition to the tail and I also want to kind of hide the legs that I added there. I didn't want to waste them, but I didn't want to make it obvious either. So I'm adding it onto the fin. The fin's going to have more definition, be thicker than a usual fin would be. You know what? It's my made up character. I think the fin can be a little thicker for a T-Rex mermaid thing. Um, Gertrude, so I think it's fine. Now I am adding glue onto the side of the fin here because I want to remove the noticeable like corrugated cardboard look to it. So I shove the glue in there and then kind of squish it down with my finger. I think I eventually move on to hot glue because I was getting the glue all over my finger and didn't like it. So yeah, here's something. So a few videos ago, I actually made my burbs and I needed to use the wings. So they didn't go to waste. I actually used them on Gertrude here. So you can see I'm actually squaring it up there and now I'm adding glue to the edge and I'm getting it ready to be applied onto the side. I do have activator with this glue, which is awesome because then I don't have to sit, sit there holding it. It really stinks though, wear a mask. Now I don't want to waste the tail either. So I want to add it to the head. So I get it planned. It looks like it's going to work there. And then I add a hole and then I just stick it in with a wire and it works. It kind of adds a more fishy element to it, which I really, really love. Kind of like an angler fish, I guess. But now I need to clean up some of the clay. I didn't get it perfect. So I use, I carve it. And then I also clean it up with some sandpaper and then I wipe it down cleaning up my mess as I go. But now it's time to add the other wings. I use all the wings that I used on my burbs project or removed on my burbs project on this one, which I really, really like. I just need to find the placement for them. Additionally, if you saw my dragon that I made citrus, um, I actually removed this particular fin or scales or whatever it's called off its back and I'm going to reuse that too. So I'm actually using up a ton of my scraps that I keep just in case. Now I do add the wings. I don't keep the placement as is with the top wings just because they're a little too fanned out, but I wanted to show you what it looked like at that stage too. I do change it. I don't regret the change, but I do want to show you what it looks like. Here you can see the wings are changed and now it's time to bring out the epoxy sculpt. I do use epoxy sculpt here instead of DOS clay. One, it does have a more guaranteed dry time. Uh, you're, it's very reliable. Additionally, it is like really durable and I really wanna make sure those connections between the wings and the body are really, really secure. So I would prefer to use this instead. Really, in the end of the day, it's a time and place for what you need. Uh, you can use different tools for different things, so you don't have to lock yourself into one thing. I have a variety of different clays that I use for many different projects, and I like to try them out. Um, here I am using um, some, I want to say my modeling compound at the bottom. I didn't want to add clay to the bottom, just a nice thick layer of modeling compound made it really nice and even and covered up the cardboard. Now we're moving to wood glue. Now, why wood glue? Because it works really well and it dries in 10 minutes, which is a delight. And you'll notice I'm adding something a little different here. I decided I want to texture this guy and what do I do? I use beads, seed beads. And believe you me, when I say I bite off more than I can chew on my citrus project, I bit off way more than I could chew on this project. This took forever. Regrets, there were so many. Oh my gosh. But also I want some definition, so I add scrapbooking gems. I have pearls and gems and I'm going down the back because I want a little bit of differentiation. So please know that while this does look really beautiful, as you can see right here, look, it's so shiny. It does not stay like that. That's not the intention. These are just added for the shapes and the definition and the texture, that's it.
So it is a slow, very slow process. And honestly, I skip over so much of it. And here you can see I added the long beads to the center again, just to add a different texture so it's not just one thing. I also added some sequins to the side, which I don't go over because it was a major pain in the butt to even put those on. And I add, and I add, and I add seed beads to the side to make it look nice. Still using the trusty wood glue, do recommend. Would 100% use that again. And yeah, I do have different sizes of beads I actually use. You can kind of see the colors in there. That is intentional. Um, additionally, I use glass beads that I actually got out of, uh, like I think some face masks that were weighted that my kids didn't like. You can see the different colors of beads. Those are actually different sizes. So you get the different texture, smaller texture near the bottom and top, and then bigger texture in the middle. Now, this area is something really unique. I actually found this really interesting TikToker who likes to make like, uh, teapots into like monsters and she uses like the I forget what it's called it's embossing and I thought I could do that I I, I couldn't it it didn't work I make it look like it worked it didn't I don't know and so whatever moving on um, as you can clearly see I'm now using my modeling compound to get rid of the texture I don't want and that's the like skin texture on the t-rex as well as I kind of blend in the other texture that I've added and now I've moved on to painting like wow I just I skipped right over that um, I think I used the Mod Podge and white paint for that and now I'm moving on to regular white paint and then on to regular paint I jumped through a lot of this because you've actually seen me do a lot of this and if you haven't I highly recommend you check out my other videos where I do go in a lot more depth but here I am just prepping my colors and I, I really love I've been really into color theory like I guess color theory is the wrong word I've been using palettes I find online and I do use them as reference but I actually build my own in that picture you can see that there's a beta fish and it's just a beautiful beta fish and I actually use that as a really big point of reference for building out this fish now I do tend to go to the more tropical fish as you can see in my reference underneath the creation I have here because tropical fish are just so stunning I looked at a variety of different kinds but the colors were not what I wanted so I used the beta fish as my color palette and I then picked out the colors I already had um, in my paints with my uh, golden matte acrylics to match that color palette as closely as I could. The only color I didn't have was the cream, which I, you saw me make. So I am adding blues, I'm adding purples, I got pinks. Um, eventually you're gonna see me add some orange and then eventually that, that tan to really like just kind of break up the colors. That's pretty much the gist of the actual painting. I like, it's just all about layering and finding the good placement and finding the right spot to put it. So I'm just gonna fast forward through a lot of this. There's, there's multiple coats being done here. It takes a really long time. So let's not overthink it. Ah, here we go. This is like the first real like view of what we're having. And you can see that colorful tropicalness appearing and I got stripes that gives it more of that tropical fish feel. Now that's not in the beta and that's completely intentional. I wanted these stripes and it was completely my own design. Um, the bird wings are meant to look like fins and that is working, although they still have a feathery texture and I'm okay with that. Additionally, I'm adding in that tan to break up all that really intense color. It is very intense at this point and you do need that little bit of separation, which I the tan comes in handy absolutely so well. And this, this thing is just popping and the texture works. Although it's really hidden and there's gonna be a solution for that coming soon, but I am in love with the colors and I think it's very unique. This is how I break it up. So I was debating on, actually I tested it. I did not show it here where you actually like, I dry brushed and I hated it. I hated it so much. It just looked horrible. So instead I took some Mod Podge with some pigment powders and I added those pigments where the color was. Now I was very precise, as you can see here, I'm adding it only to the purple, and that's my purple pigment powder mixed with glue because I didn't want any of the shine overlapping or clouding out my other colors. And it took forever to repaint again with all of these glues, and it's worth it. Now you can see the texture. It looks like a, like a fish. It's got that wet feeling, but yet, 
and you can still, and you can actually see the texture now without having to do a ton of dry brushing. Now I'm all about dry brushing and washes so I can bring out the highlights and the, and the low lights, but dang, did this work. It worked so well. Like it looks like a fish. It's just, it's so cool. And like when the light hits it, like there's a lot of light in my office here and it just is, it's popping. It's absolutely popping. I know I'm ranting a bit, but yeah. Now it's time for the eyes. We're just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna zoom in there and get those eyes all done. Add a little black speck. I think it looks pretty good. And then we go on to the base. Uh, to make sure that the paint doesn't just flake off, I actually add some gesso here. I uh, use white. I probably could have used my black gesso, but I think I have my white handy, so I just did that. And now I add my So Flat Matte Acrylics. I think that's what it's called. It's by Golden. They're amazing. Uh, this is literally one coat and you're done, and it looks absolutely incredible. Um, they're some of my favorite paints, so yeah, highly recommend. Now I'm going to bring out my other hot glue gun. The reason I have a different hot glue gun here is this is where I put my colored um, glue sticks. They stain. Uh, so I have this colored glue sticks I think I bought with my glue gun and I don't want to use them in my regular glue gun. I want to save that for clear. So I'm using this just to kind of fill in the space and get rid of those glue sticks. I have no intention of using them for anything but filler. Uh, these glue sticks are really colored if that's what you're into that's great but i don't like them for anything but filling in things so that's what i use them for now that i'm all done i do need to cover this in black paint because the glue actually did rub off some of the edges and now i need to just make sure it's all tidied up and ready to put on the felt so i have a scrap of felt here it's gonna work fine i plan for it i then glue it or nope i don't glue it on yet oh shock twist no I add some <laughs> I add some gloss uh, Mod Podge and then I add the felt you can see here it's ready to go I got my clear hot glue that's just in case it leaks this is why you have the separation between the two it's it's a good idea once it's stuck down I then trim off the felt I love having felt at the bottom of my pieces it's one of my things and then I add my signature onto the bottom of the tail usually I do it on the base but I had a big spot right here and I even add her name she is Gertrude but I actually call her Trudy so that is her name Trudy just to protect it adding some more gloss so we don't have any paint rub off and yeah it's looking pretty good I'm pretty happy with her look at all that shine and all that color and she is totally and absolutely positively done I really hope you like her as much as I do and here is Gertrude under the sea Whee! I actually have a new video editing software, Filmora, and I'm really enjoying it. It does come with a lot of stock footage. I didn't have a way to take pictures of Gertrude in my house um, or in my yard like I normally do because she's a sea creature. So here she is in all her glory and under the sea, looking amazing. Um, overall, this is a great project. I loved making it. I thought it was very interesting. It definitely tests my patience with all the seed beads and everything I put into it. But I'm really happy I was able to get this done. She's probably one of my more unique pieces just because of how where she came from, like especially where she came from. So yeah, I hope you liked it. Uh, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And be sure to ring that notification bell. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.